Welcome to Las Vegas, venue of the 2014 Consumer Electronics Show. But first, we'll take you through the technologies and display at the show. Stay with us. For news, views, trends in ICT globally and in Africa in particular, watch AIT Infotech Network for the latest news and innovation in ICT for development in Africa. Plus, what technology can do for you from business to politics, tourism and culture. I am Bayero Agabi. You're welcome. Welcome to Las Vegas, the city that never sleeps, also called the heartbeat of entertainment and fun in the United States of America. Happy day two of CES, everyone. We have a show starting in about 10 minutes. It's super exciting. We have NBA star Robert Horry coming in, signing autographs. He'll be get, we'll be doing a shootout. Also, we're giving away two ZTE handsets. And Host to the 2014 Consumer Electronics Show, tagged the Year of the Wearable. Little wonder it parodied global entertainers such as 50 Cent. With never before seen tech breakthroughs and thousands of new products launched, innovations took set stage and the 2014 International CES, put together by the Consumer Electronics Association. of different content from sports shows to uh, in-depth interviews with celebrities such as Mel B who's an international pop star. Uh, we have a comedic show which yeah, is getting, oh, getting a, good, a good view. We have a variety of different celebrities, actors, directors, writers who come to our show. What we wanted to do is there's a lot of outlets out there such as Extra, Entertainment Tonight, OMG, Insider that feature the same entertainer, entertainers like yeah. your Holly Berry's or your, your Denzel Washington's, what we wanted to do is open it up to a broader base. For what's people, the unique thing in this? What's the, what's the unique thing in this? The unique what thing, makes this different from others? What makes this different from others is that when you go to those different outlets, they, like, as I was mentioning, they tend to show the same celebrities, but yeah. our outlet actually opens it up to a variety of entertainers. So you may be the next up and coming star, you may be the next up and coming athlete, which you wouldn't get coverage on some of these bigger networks. But you can come to our network and we'll do an end up interview with you. We'll let fans really get to know you, okay. which kind of sets us aside from all of the other outlets that are out okay. there. Right now. What's that? What about it? What about it? Yeah. Uh, it has some of the. Okay. So this is a product made by Night Eyes. It's called the Steely. Uh, this is a neodymium magnet that you can attach to any device. The device, the phone, uh, case, GPS, radar detector, anything like that. It uses a 3M product called BHP tape. Okay. You would then attach this dash ball yeah. into the vehicle in the same way yeah. using the BHP tape. 
you know, instead of having your phone flying all over the place, okay. taking up a cup holder in your car, yeah. you know, you can have it uh, oriented so you can see it and use it anywhere in the vehicle. Okay. We also have the ability to do that back here with the tablet. Okay. So the magnet on the tablet's a little larger, but it still works in the same size uh, ball. Now in the back seat of the car, you have this attachment mechanism. You have your iPad, either a mini or a full-size iPad oriented, so you have full access um, in the car, removable. Um, but it's it's got about 10 pounds worth of force, okay. so it's it's something that will uh, well, it's not going to fly off, you know, when you go over a bump or on a bumpy road, anything like that. Okay, so uh, what do you call the product? It's called Steely. Oh, okay. So here, if you look right here. Okay. The pedestal kit. Okay. So this is the pedestal kit. It has little silicone feet on the bottom here, so it doesn't slide up across a slick surface. Now you can, in your office, in the kitchen, you can attach, you know, your iPad, phone. So you have, you know, a nice, uh, elegant solution for uh, for the phone. In the family, it's called the Hobnob. This is a way. Technology of the future was widespread at the 2014 CES, where executives from every major industry came to see, touch, interact, and do business at the world's intersection for innovation. <laughs> What's the difference? The difference is that now I can see you. And then okay. in the past I couldn't see, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you seeing with this? I can see connecting, okay. and it says connect, connecting home. Yeah, I so, want to go uh, home. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have to um, fail. What is this? Uh, here. Okay, oh that's Google this, is Google this is Google Glass. Ah, Glass. I can see you now. Okay. Like in a video. Okay, so you're taking a video. I'm taking a video. Okay. Yeah, smile, guys. <laughs> okay. Nice. My name is Cesar Funes. Okay. I'm from Texcoco. Okay. Mexico. Great. Okay. Mexico. Okay. Cool. Mexico. Wow. Back home, we need to learn one thing. That you need to plan. You need to prepare. And we need to know something that even out of nothing, you have to create something. The whole of Vegas, it's almost like a, a dry land. They have two things which we know them, maybe negative different. We say uh, sin, which is where they do gambling and legalized prostitution. But here, they have been able to maximize the opportunity to bring a lot of people in here to come and see the latest innovations in technology. And that is the driving force of the economy for Vegas. People come in here and they use technology to really uh, to to they use technology to bring them in. They use technology, new innovations in technology to bring them in to the, to contribute a lot to the economy of Vegas. Are you scared? That's yeah, cool, huh? yeah. <laughs> you think it's let, good? Let, let me, let me do that. This event, from what I've seen, it, it, look, it seems to me to be the biggest IT event that, that I've ever attended in my life. With over 350,000 
delegates from different countries across the globe. And you see young innovators that are really coming up with solutions, with applications, with so many things that are really original and uh, which I think we can really learn from. And that is what we are doing in Nigeria too, that we need to bring our young innovators together to develop solutions that are really peculiar to our needs in the country, which can really play at the global level as well. So I see it as something that we need to go back home, plan very well, and in the next edition, we really organize our people, our young innovators to come and be part of the group as well. Amazing new products emerge in the areas of wireless, apps, automotive, digital health and fitness, 3D printing, startup tech and improved video conferencing and so much more. Excuse me, I hope I'm safe. <laughs> oh. um, it allows me to, I can attend a meeting in New York and I can actually host it. I can walk around a conference room table and I can say, sir, could you please get on your phone and or could you please turn to page 14. If you, if you look up in the slide, you'll notice. So instead of being two-dimensionally restricted to a stack, projector or someone's laptop, I'm physically there. I can go backwards, forwards, I can walk down the hallways with you, I can attend lunches, I can go up and down any ADA. Um, Okay, Sarah, thank you very much. All right, Sarah, thank you, but um, you never told me what's the bandwidth like, the bandwidth, for me to get this quality of um, uh, video, bandwidth usage. Okay, you're, you're, you're on Wi-Fi, 802, 11, whatever, but I'm asking what bandwidth are you using? Like a meg or two meg or ten meg, whatever. Um, I have an eight hour battery life. I don't know what type of battery I have in this thing, but um, the, the Wi-Fi is very good and it also has a 4G card capability on top of that. Okay, I think uh, um, I understand you. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. First of all, I am amazed at the anonymity of uh, the exhibition halls and all what they've also arranged. Um, everything is so well organized. Um, we th I think we need this level of organization. Of, uh, conferences and exhibitions back um, home. We are now living in a world in which uh, technology is acting as a catalyst. So these are Epson's new smart wrist wearables. I like to call these the next generation activity monitor. They measure not only your activity like steps taken, calorie burn, sleep pattern, but more importantly, it measures your heart rate. So right now my pulse is my heart rate is at 106. So I think I'm very excited to be talking to you. <laughs> and uh, basically, this is a way for someone to really get to understand their heart and to be able to understand how their heart is uh, doing as they work, uh, as they perform different tasks throughout the day. So it can actually capture up to 480 hours of heart rate data as well as activity data before you have to transfer it to a smartphone. And it comes in two form factors, a watch, and a kind of a band. The nice thing about the watch is it has a display so that you can always look at it and say, oh, I need to relax, you know? Um, the nice thing about the band is it collects information um, in a very compact package and then you can transfer it later. this can store data, you said? So you said. Both of these can store. Oh, can store Yeah, both of these can store. And, we'll, and this, is, uh, this is Stacy who will kind of really show you how the um, application and the website will work. Okay. Okay, this is this is your exercise mode here. So all the information basically here will connect and you have school. And it's, and, but I can also right click I can look at the labels or the parts of it. I can make it transparent. Okay. Because then you can oops, and you can turn it and you can see how it works inside. So you're seeing how the how the valves work or not? Yeah. Things like that. Sort of thing you can't see. Even if you took a real heart apart, you wouldn't be able to see that. So it's very powerful for showing people how things really work. Um, 
as well as you know providing things like labels and stuff. I can show you that's the left atrium. Yeah. That's, that's the interior bay cava, all the different parts of it show up here. So it could be very you know um, useful for perhaps like you said education and maybe for diagnosis for doctors or something what? like that. My experience participating to all uh, these global shows show me uh, one thing. The innovation is out there, so we just need a platform to showcase that uh, those innovations. And uh, CES provided us a lot of input about how we can run a show that can help Africans to bring their idea to life. It was an incredible event that brought the global tech community together and successfully celebrating the showcase, the amazing innovation that is a hallmark of our industry. To this end, Nigerians did not fail to impress, at least to see and do business. By just being consumers, there is no way we would be on that platform. Because there was hardly anybody there that had a booth set up to say how many millions of phones they've consumed, to say how many thousands of experts they've imported from other countries. But they were showing casing what they have developed, what they have created, the inventions. And so they were looking at it from a productive standpoint. And so we as a continent need to rethink how we want to move forward. What would I recommend? One is that the government will eventually become the major beneficiary of this type of work need to have platforms that will bring together these innovators and encourage them, provide support, provide encouragement, provide resources for them to go ahead and carry out innovation in an organized fashion. More than 3,200 exhibitors showcase their latest technologies and major tech breakthroughs, launches some 20,000 new products to capture the world's attention, including the Foley products highlights. Until then, when I join you again in Nigeria.